Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm. The polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. It reminds you of the day you first held it, with fear and respect, hoping you don't have to use it in vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. This gun, Sunrise Parabellum, will be the only thing standing between you and the all-consuming nothingness that threatens to eat the world. Sheathe it and wait, Herald. It won't be long now. I'm all out of shits to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. He's dangerous. Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse, the masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. We're out of time. This is... The mercenary tribunal. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. The big one is the mercenary at the gates, the scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Stop! This is the police. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. No, he's calming down. I can talk to him. You can't think that way now. This is serious. Big fuck! Easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the blue medicinal spirit in your hand seems to have a pulsating glow. It feels enticing somehow. All right, end game. Light me on fire and throw me in his face. Wait, it's a good thing you have an anthropomorphic petrol bomb. It really is, but you have to soften him up first. Present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight, it's a good idea to get under his skin first. I don't know about this getting under his skin, what if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling here. No, please. Peace. It has worked this far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from that. Dangerous. 
Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. I knew you were a goddamn scab leader. Yeah, I don't fucking act so well. Laylee had a hard on for making faces for you natives. Fucking food aid shit. That shit is done now. Trigger time. Who are you? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. He had blue eyes, didn't he? Your colonel? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Listen, you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kipped ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me? I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. This one isn't used to being suited this long. She's uncomfortable. We'll open fire just to hurry things along. Benatel, 41? That really happened, didn't it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt, or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your ship pipes, ready! He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, lately he knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah! He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. But that didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Kipty the Kipped here. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. Listen, man. We told you we... Told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck! You'll die first! Your colonel didn't deserve to go out like that. I promise I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cop, his killer stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting him. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Big talk, but you got him to admit he's a bad leader. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Really, none of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Just to be clear, are you officially in charge of this unit after the death of your colonel? Me? I fucking told you. I'm a Crenell Major with 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. So you are the highest ranking of the three of you? Nah, I just have the biggest gun. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun. But we're beyond that now. Well, hold on, what's the highest rank in Cornell? King Reaper. As the leader of this group, reconsider your actions. This doesn't need to end in bloodshed. You're right. But you see, I 
want it to end in bloodshed. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else, and his hand is off the gun. This did something. Easy now. Tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah, who did then? You should implicate yourself. Throw yourself onto the embrasure, chest first. It was me. No, wait, he didn't. He is tense, like a steel spring under full load. My partner doesn't believe me, but I probably did it, and I can't even remember I did. You think this is funny? What if I just shot one of your pals here for fun? Huh? How about the kid? That'd be fucking funny. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead court marshal won't decide who... He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him, all together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You're lying. DePaul heard it. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up. Listen. The shot rings in your ears, a low tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flowed over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Your judgment is impaired. You'll regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. With a crash of shattering glass and a terrible roar, the fire draws in oxygen. The bomb hits the mercenary in the chest, swallowing him in flames as he staggers backward. In the fiery inferno, you see your tie, coiling around the man's neck. It is no longer horrific, but beautiful and pure. I only ever wanted you to have fun, Harry. The tie calls out to you one last time. Wait, I didn't even know your name. My name, should you know it, is Jobson AS Men's Fashion Model Colorful Tie, catalog number J327. I know so little about you. How did we meet? One day a sad man walked into a clothing store. He looked really darn like he hadn't had fun in years. He needed someone to show him how to rock and roll again. Jupes and A.S. catalog number J327 shone on the tie rack, trying to get his attention. The sad man picked it up and put it on. He looked at himself in the mirror, didn't smile. Nothing will ever heal me, but at least I'll have a funny tie. And from that moment on, we rode together. The rest of your clothes were still normal back then, but we took care of that soon enough. Did we have any fun? Truthfully, not a lot. I did everything a multi-pattern necktie can do to help a man. I mean, I tried to get you to do all the fun things. Drink beer, drink wine, drink cider. Go to parties with young people around and drink beer and cider. Do drugs too, so you don't fall asleep. You had some fun, 
but not enough to heal you! Uh, what's wrong with me? Your heart is broken, Bratushka, and it cannot be mended. Believe me, I've tried. Am I going to stay like this forever? No, you're going to be mowed down by gunfire from the two remaining mugs. So no, not forever. Who broke my heart? You both did, Bratan. Deep down, you know it was both of you. No, no. It was her, mostly. Don't lie to him, Niktai. What's going on with that guy? This guy? Well, his face has cracked open into a scream of terror. It looks like he's performing some sort of a shamanistic dance that requires you to be on fire. Yeah, his body contorts in a very disturbing manner. There's no mincing words with this one. He's dying a horrible, painful death as you're talking to your tie in your head. Smells like a steak on the grill, the burning flesh in your nostrils. May he find peace in death. It's good to see you still have capacity for compassion, my friend. Deep down, you are a good man. Goodbye, Necktie. See you on the other side. The Necktie disintegrates into molten heat, its last remaining embers letting out a pop and crack that sounds like... Harry, for God's sake! Watch out! To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. I'll try to dodge. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling. He aims face pale. Two shots ring at once. Ah! One from the lieutenant's pistol and the other from De Paul's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Kim. Did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through the burning meat and the flames. With his face boiling off, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. I try to evade. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. 
No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. Stay with me. This is a stupid world. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. No! Kim! No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. No. Let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Of the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected and smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his wound sleep. He can't go, not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance, a radio of the world, plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the you're thirsty. Reach for the glass of water by the bed. The world is still there. Sleep some more. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double then triple from the pain. It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Again. Sunrise, Parabellon. Oh, ouch. ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just go to draw in pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Oh, the room. It's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Droamin and curse. And drink water. The piss jacket, Kim. You took it off. Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. What did you say? Uh, sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. 
It's an old revolutionary thing. My gun, it's engraved on it. Cops like it. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off, for now. Barely. Good. Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. What happened? What happened? You threw an improvised petroleum bomb at the Major. A firefight ensued. The tie made me do it. He does not answer, and searches for something in his coat pocket instead. A smoke, most likely. Is he dead? Very. He died in the hospital. A bloodstained killer. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive too. You were bleeding out by then. I think you say that no one wants to party with you. And you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the Paul, before she got to jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. And they're all dead. All three of the contractors. The pool was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. How many casualties on the Union side, total? Four. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, and Angus. The fat one, he took a lot of bullets. And that's... All. An absolute disaster. Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized. Yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking. His hunched back. You have it worse. But he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. Can I walk? We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. I'm a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vicmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. Isn't that strange? I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Okay. I'm sure they're worried about you. No, they would be here if they were truly worried. Sorry. That's between you and them, he thinks. If not my station, then who treated me? 
I did. Thank you. No need. Okay. Easy now. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. How are you? <laughs> the lieutenant looks at you, teetering on your feet. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. But I don't know either. We can't talk to Everard. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classia too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Wait, Classia's gone too? Oh yes. She left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. I asked Mr. Gart. Turns out it was a bad idea not to arrest her. But maybe it was a good deed. It will pay off in heaven. Who would have figured? Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think your incredibly dangerous theory about you being the killer was incorrect, however. There is not one piece of evidence to support it. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The dual aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut, plucked like a string by the gust. We should check Mrs. Katzerine Alastahie's room upstairs. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. <laughs> 